What's up everybody, Asley here with another Touch Designer tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to scan just about anything uh, with an iPhone or an Android using an app called Polycam. And then we're going to talk about how to export those scans and bring them into Touch Designer so we can do some cool stuff to them. Uh, there will be a part two to this series that will talk about uh, some of the cool stuff that we can do to them once they're in there. But today we're just going to get from scanning on the phone to point cloud and touch designer. So what we're looking at in the background here is a 3D scan I made with this app uh, of my living room um, that's been turned into a point cloud and touch designer. I'm going to give you two examples. One's going to be this, uh, and the reason is there are two different scan modes in this app. One is the LiDAR mode, which is uh, recommended for rooms or large spaces or things where you don't need as much detail. Great for touch designer because a lot of it's very abstract anyway. Um, so that's one mode. And then there's another mode that's photogrammetry. That's for smaller objects, things that are more detailed that you want a uh, more accurate scan of. I'm going to show you how to do both. They're essentially the same workflow, but you'll get a feel for, you know, which one looks like what and so forth. Anyhow, let's get to it. Uh, we're going to start with the app which, as I said, is called Polycam. If you just type in Polycam uh, in the App Store, uh, it looks like this. That's it. That's the one right there. Uh, but I already have it, so I am just going to go ahead and open it on my phone. Now, typically, it will default to your scanner, um, but I already had it open, so it's defaulting to my library. So let me just get back to my scanner here, and uh, then I'm just going to get up and go. Uh, all right, so I need to tap the record button. We're already in the uh, the mode we want defaults to LiDAR, which like I said is what we want for scanning rooms. Um, and you can kind of see it's just forming this mesh grid over all the surfaces based on the depth information it's getting back. Uh, and you can see the blue areas are what it still needs to scan. So you just walk around uh, and point your phone at everything until you're satisfied that you have a detailed enough scan for what you want. Um, now this room has all kinds of stuff in it, so um, so I could spend all day doing a really in-depth scan, but since it's just to create some abstract point cloud artwork, it doesn't really need to be super high fidelity. Uh, so let me just speed up the rest of this. You all have the idea, and uh, that should get us where we need to go. Cool, and when you're done, uh, you just hit the record button again and it will automatically save the scan. Now, um, the LiDAR, uh, it's faster and less detailed. So Polycam will actually allow you to process it right on your phone. So you just hit the process button and it'll take, you know, 10, 20 minutes, depending on how long uh, or how, how detailed your scan was. Uh, but once it's done, uh, you can take a look at the entire scan. You can rotate it around. You can export a video of it. But the thing that we want from it is we want the point cloud data. So we have to export this with this button right here. And then we need to choose the point cloud option down here at the bottom. And once we have done that, um, I'm just going to airdrop it to myself. And now we have that point cloud file. All right, now that we have the uh, scan completed and we've sent the point file over, let's open a touch designer project. Um, and then let me find the scan. Okay, so it uh, it exports as a zip file uh, with this format. So let me just unarchive that, put it uh, right here. Cool, there it is, there's my point cloud. All right, so from a new project, I need to just clear everything out. And then in order to read this, we need to use the point file in top. All right, and then once we have that, we need to go and find our point cloud like so and there it is all right cool so um it doesn't really show us a ton let's uh let's do a couple things here so i need to uh to, to use this 
There's a few things I have to do just to kind of set up. So I need to get a point file select top. I actually need two of them. I'll show you why in a second. So we have two of these. The f let's we need to drag this like we're using a, like a material. We just drag this on top of this and it will connect them. Uh, we need to do that for both. So on this first point file select here, um, this is going to be our position data for each uh, vertex in our point cloud. So you notice here in the parameters, uh, it allows you to assign your red, green, and blue channels in tops from your point cloud info. And if you look at the drop down here, um, your PLY file should have all of this information baked into it. So it has your position data and then your color information as well. So we want position, so we want X, Y, and Z for this one. And this one, we want the opposite. We want to have our color information. So for red, we need to select red, green, green, blue, blue. Get the idea. Um, all right, so now if I bang that out to a null, actually if we do that with both, it should look pretty similar. Which is a problem because that's not the color of my living room. All right, so um, so here's our positional information, multicolored. That means we're going to have a wide array of points scattered around since our G and B are X, Y, and Z. That's good. That's what we want. But this is like crazy looking. That's not the color of anything I scanned. So why? Why is that? Probably because we're uh, operating between, um, we just have different values coming in here. Uh, I think we're between 0 and 1, and RGB data works uh, with uh, 255 places. So we need to do a little math. So we need to put a math top in there, and then in our range we need to divide the whole thing by... 255 and then as you can see this is much more like the colors of uh, of my actual living room all right so that's our kind of homework to get the point cloud file in and that's uh that's really all there is to it on the tops end of thing but we do need to set up a, an instancing network so we can actually see it so uh i'm gonna hit tab i'm gonna go to my sop tab and then um I'm going to do this structure that you may have seen in some of my past tutorials. So I'm going to have an add SOP going into a convert. And then both of those are going to go into a geo comp. And that's what I'm going to instance are just these little particle points. So I need to turn add points on in the add SOP. I need to turn a few things differently on and here I need to go uh, convert to particles per point and then render as point sprites. Cool. Uh, let's finish setting up the render network so we're going to need a camera and I don't know that we're actually going to need this light but we'll put it there just in case. Okay so we also need a render top and then let's send the whole thing out to an RGB key so we have black background, and then we can just use that as our, our display. All right, cool. So we have nothing. Great, wonderful. Um, let's bump up our resolution to whatever you're allowed. Do 4K. And then let's go into our Geo and set up instancing. So we need to go to this tab. Let's turn instancing on and then for our uh, translate up we're going to use this the first point file so i'm going to drag this null over here and then just pick r g and b oh we still can't see anything um let me uh we need a material, so I'm going to grab a point sprite material, and then I'm going to drag that onto my geo. There we go, now we get points. Um, and then I'm going to 
uh, Command A, select all, and uh, turn off my viewers. See if I can, yeah, buy back some frames. Cool. All right. Um, so since it's scan of a room, it's big. So let me uh, adjust where my camera is. We could we could shrink the entire geo, but uh, uh, but this is this is fine. Um, we'll just back the camera out. Let's go. There we go. All right, so it looks like uh, when it exported this, it did so vertically. So that's a little irritating, but not an uncommon problem when working with uh, point clouds. So um, what we're going to do on this is uh, we're going to add a point transform in here just to uh, move it to where it needs to be. Um, all right, so I think we can just rotate this. What's it gonna be? Z axis? I think it's gonna be Z axis. Nope, X. So X axis, and then I think if we just go back, negative 90, we should be oriented correctly. Yeah, okay, so negative 90, for whatever reason, that sets it up oriented the way my, my living room actually is. Um, all right, and then uh, I can move this back in a bit. We go we have a we have a ghostly white set of points but you can kind of see the outline of uh of the stairs and everything we scanned earlier so that's that's what we want all right uh how do we get this color uh involved let's go back into geo and then we need to go to the second instancing tab and down in color over here we need to drag our other null as our color op and then just do the whole song and dance. Pick our G and B. Boom. Colors. Uh, you can see through everything, so it's a little hard to see the colors. We can adjust that if you want to have bigger points uh, that look, I guess, more like... Uh, it just makes everything look more like solid. You can just adjust your constant point scale to taste. Uh, and then if I move back inside this far wall here, uh, yeah, it sort of looks like a room. Um, abstract for sure, but uh, we just achieved that by messing with the size of our points. All right, so that's uh, that is how to do this with the LiDAR, just that it's most simple is set a scan, turn it into a point cloud and get it into touch designer. Let me show you how to do that with an object as well. All right, so I'm going to go back to polycam. I'm going to open my scanner by hitting the little plus button. And then this is what I'm scanning. So this time, rather than using LiDAR, which it defaults to, I'm going to select photo. And it looks a little different here. But workflow is the same. You just tap the record button. And you'll see down in the bottom right corner, it is stacking up images. So it's just automatically taking pictures from different angles as I move around. Um, and I believe it'll allow you to do, to do up to 250. Um, this is... I guess a more processing intensive, but also a much more accurate way of getting a scan. This is, I think, uh, I'm narrating this in, uh, retroactively, so I think that was me just crawling over my kitchen island to try to keep this scan going. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. I'll speed the rest of this up. And then uh, the other thing that's different about objects is that we can, uh, we can crop them. All right, once you're done with your scan, hit record again. It takes you back here. Uh, then you need to hit upload and process. Before we do that, I'd like to turn object masking on. Um, it recommends it for detailed scans, so there we go. And now we wait for it to finish. All right, so once it's done processing, we select it and we can go into it. And then if you look down at the bottom, there are some tools you can use. One of them is crop. So we select that and it's going to open this box that we can then adjust. Uh, the controls are relatively self-explanatory. You just uh, move the sides in or rotate the box around as needed. Uh, to rotate your view of the object, you just 
uh, click and drag or use your finger if you're on your phone around um, and you do this until you've got you know just what you want of your skin um, and uh, and then you're done when you're uh, when you're ready when you've got it where you want you hit apply and it will save it but it'll discard all of that um, excess information that you didn't want that looks good to me so we can close out of this all right so once we have our object scanned it's the exact same workflow so we can just use this same network inside touch designer we're just going to select a different point file in um all right so we click on our point file on top hit the little plus button and then i need to go find my other point cloud which was called it'll be the same it'll export like this and then um, there we go. That's the one. All right, cool. So there is the helmet. Um, I have this rotation. I wonder if this weird, yeah, it looks like, huh, that's interesting. So it looks like the, the scans export from polycam oriented, uh, differently than would make sense to me at least. So, um, so to get this oriented upright, I have rotated it 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise, and then I also need to rotate it, I think, 90 on the z-axis. Yeah, it looks like it. Or about, actually, that's 80. So uh, it's a little off-center. These can be kind of wonky. Um, and then if I want, I can either, I can adjust this one of two ways. I have the camera a little further away than is default here because we were looking at a room before. So I can just move the camera in. Or if I want to actually move this, I could just go to my point transform and scale it up with the uniform scale. And as you can see, as you get larger, you can start to see the points smaller. They start to blend in. And we can do the same thing with this that we did with the room if we want to make it look points we reduce the size of our constant point scale more solid bump it up and of course there is like a fine line of as big as you can get or as small as you can get while still looking solid and so on anyway that's uh that's the short and skinny of it um getting point clouds into touch designer and part two of this will go over some cool effects that uh, you can use to manipulate these so they're not you know just these boring static things i'll see you then